Hello there, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Metcore. It's so great to have you all here today. Um, we've got a very exciting session for you today. So if you can have a good cup of coffee or tea next to you and you're settled in a nice spot to talk today. My name is Henry Barnes and I'm the founder and head tech reporter at Parlay Me. We're a tech news channel, content creation agency for startups, investors, entrepreneurs and business leaders. And today we're joined by two metaverse outside enthusiasts and experts. Um, we have Samal Ahuja, who's the CEO of VR Academy, um, based in teaching children um, with leading experts in the field of how to integrate theme skills to create and build immersive content and virtual reality environments using visual art, um, film and game applications. So we're speaking to Samal today to learn a little bit about his journey and what he's building. We also have with us Ilya Paskov, who's the Chief Metaverse Officer at Alto Metaverse. And it's a cross metaverse hub with NFT and XR marketplace. Um, Alta is the most secure and entertaining place to store your meaningful digi digital and physical assets. So that's very interesting. So we're excited to speak to Ilya today too about what he's building his journey in the metaverse so far. So um, to get, can't just give you a little bit of an update on their experiences as well. Samal has over 25 years experience in 3D design, planning, creative art, and creating immersive XR technologies. He has extensive experience and skills in acquisition and management of mobility infrastructure, projects, VR, AR, and XR applications for education infrastructure industry, mobile planning, design, transport planning, modeling, and research projects for clients in Europe, Africa, Middle East, and India. So he's definitely a global player in this space. And then Ilya, he's a futurist entrepreneur and a business development, so business developer and an award-winning creative director. He describes himself also as a design astronaut with a big passion for innovation, sustainability, strategy and technologies. He has over 15 years experience, um, successfully working with enterprise companies, startups, digital and blockchain products. So we're very excited to have you both here today, both Sonal and Ilya. I might just start off by obviously welcoming you both and perhaps there's something you want to elaborate on a little bit more, but I hope those intros <laughs> did you guys justice. Well, they were uh, perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, I hope Ilya hasn't uh, frozen. Uh, for some reason, he's frozen to me, but we'll, we'll continue anyway. So, um, so now, like uh, any new technology, education is key. So I want to firstly uh, congratulate you on creating such a dynamic and immersive online education platform because it's so important, um, especially for future generations as we're all, let's be honest, navigating what is the metaverse, what will it look like, what will it sound like, what will it feel like? Um, so thank you for taking the initiative. With this in mind, can you share with us how engaged, I guess, and talented children are when they're building in the metaverse world? Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you're working with children from ages of like five to 12, is that correct? Or what's your demographic that you're working with? So we start with young children, you're right. Uh, they are from the age of nine plus. And nine, nine plus, sorry. And, and there is no upper end to creativity while we are focusing from okay. 9 to 13. But uh, mm -hmm. we are, we have got children, in fact, not children, but adults who are students, uh, the oldest one being 82 years old. So there's no mm -hmm. end to creativity and it's never too late to learn uh, anything. And, um, you know, uh, if you have to congratulate uh, anybody on this idea, it's not me, but it's my 12-year-old uh, son. This is very mm -hmm. much his idea. And the, the journey for us starts uh, with, with him, you know, it was him who was actually uh, um, in this beginning of pandemic, he was quite ill. He's on chemotherapy, unfortunately. And, um, you know, as, our, as, a, as a parent, we want everything best for our children. And 
Uh, I was into architecture and design. We were using virtual reality as a commercial technology to present our ideas to the stakeholders to show them how things would be constructed and how it will be. Uh, we started to focus more on uh, creating a, we were also making games for our professional uh, uh, companies, you know, um, the large uh, gaming houses of the world. And then, uh, you know, this business that I run is uh, done together with my brother. We had made a game uh, in which children could go on the moon in virtual reality and they could do some experiments. And I showed it to my, uh, my kid uh, when he was uh, unwell and poorly in the hospital. You know, just just try this out. You know, see how what you t how it feels. So he could just uh, be off his pain completely. He was disconnected uh, from the, that really stressful and problematic environment, and he could forget his pain. He was like he was like on the moon, and he didn't want to get out. And then he asked me, you know, um, the story that Dad uh, actually I don't want to just play games. I want to learn how you do it. So that was the start of VR Academy. And today we are, uh, it took us about a year to develop a very, very bespoke, uh, engaging, entertaining, you know, curriculum in, in which children, they love to come, you know, they, they don't have a headache or a stomach ache if they don't like it, no. Uh, it's very engaging and we are almost about, uh, you know, uh, I would say a few months down the line since our launch, uh, nearly about a year that uh, we got this academy going and a lot of interesting kids all around the world are joining and they're creating some really exciting and wonderful stuff. So if you have to thank anybody, it's my child for this idea, it's not me. I'm just trying to implement his, his dreams. That's fantastic. Well, look, it, it comes from, I think sometimes the best startups or projects in the world come from a personal experience, yeah? Um, and that's a beautiful story. So I'm so glad that he has spurred this. And that, that was actually one of my other questions, which we'll get to a little bit longer. A little bit later is like how you got into this industry so you kind of answered that because you come from a very different background originally with infrastructure and transport and whatnot so i guess my next question is um you've been in, immersed in the vr industry for like four years per se um you have phd research in ai at the imperial college of london you're visiting through so prior to this you worked in infrastructure and transportation other than your son, obviously, you know, spurring this um, change, well, not change of, um, you're in it anyway, but what made you so, I guess, enthralled in VR? Because you're, to me, you're an early adopter, yeah? I'm, I, I'm honest, I haven't been on the VR bandwagon um, myself. I know obviously many people are, but what made you believe in this technology so early on? So you see, uh, many technologies are stepping stones for creating something new. And uh, virtual reality is an applied science. By applied science, we mean that we are using other technologies uh, to make our uh, vision, our story come true. Now, uh, by the very nature, let us take, for example, uh, many years ago, uh, things changed uh, when the telephone was invented. It was a way to communicate with a simple telephone. I remember dialing with my hands. Nowadays, you just say, hey, Siri, call somebody else. It's, it's, it's been a technology journey, so to speak. So uh, mm -hmm. when I was doing my research, uh, always, uh, I, you know, I believe that uh, in order to create the, solve the challenges of the world, it's important to do, uh, it's important to get back, not to the books, but to the drawing board once again. Uh, as a city designer, when we were uh, solving some large complex problems, many a times, uh, our problems with cities, uh, which we were trying to solve, were looking at sustainability, inclusion, uh, social redevelopment. And now we are talking about bigger problems such as climate change. Uh, you know, do we really need to travel? We can all use Zoom to make some many meetings happen. And we've cut so much, I think, so unnecessary wasted carbon footprint. So my job was with the city design to make the cities work efficiently. I studied architecture and city planning so as to uh, create sustainable uh, livelihoods and neighborhoods. And uh, when we were doing research, uh, one of the things that we did stumble upon was using uh, for many complex problems, which are multidimensional, you need to come up with algorithms which are uh, not just based on something like if then else, but they are kind of learning from their own mistakes. Now, in those early days, I'm talking 1999, early 2000, mm -hmm. These algorithms, uh, there was no term coined as such as artificial intelligence as such. You know, we used to call them 
we, we used to call these algorithms like genetic algorithms or optimization heuristic algorithms or now we call them biomimicry so it was like finding a piece of code which knows how to self-evolve how to how to solve some complex problems and that's what i did my research on and i applied it to solving cities uh, traffic uh, and congestion problems many a times we came up across investors and decision makers who had no idea about mathematics and they were really not bothered to be honest they wanted to know is it going to work or not very simple i'm making a tram in front of my house they're going to do a lot of digging what am i going to get in the end of it and uh, many people would just litigate against some very big social projects including politicians would not understand what is it uh, what is going to be the long-term benefit of such uh, social uh, investments and uh, in order to convince our ideas we had to sometimes create simulate these we had to create digital twins so uh, yes. and uh, even then the, the numbers were, they were looking at the bigger picture not just uh, the uh, micro uh, uh, economics so to speak so we used the visual aids yeah. and we married the components from the game uh, industry because in gaming the graphics are amazing when you play a, a game like need for speed or like spider-man 5 i don't know if you've a chance to see on playstation 5 the spider-man oh wow it's it's like it's like beyond creativity so we could bring those uh marriage of gaming industry along with digital twins and then when we use vr you could just teleport yourself inside oh this is how it's going to be so all those ambiguities those those litigation um, surrounding mm -hmm. such complex projects was was removed and we use this technology to solve some really complex problems and therefore maybe the early adopters that's what we were doing using technology to to convince the people that yes there is a better or a sustainable solution and this is how we can do it and this is how we can save time money resources that's the key yeah absolutely i mean if you can show people instead of telling them something you're you're two steps ahead brilliant so i guess my next question is like during your time working in vr and obviously you're working on you know to demonstrate and showcase you know your business opportunities and now actually immersing yourself really in it with um with your new project is i guess growth and development have you seen in the sector since the transition i mean an obvious one the metaverse is obviously making it you know coming to life and fruition so to speak yeah, how much, how, how have you found the development process, I guess, and also with that in mind, the adoption process where people okay, actually that's adopt? Very, very useful and a very interesting question, you know. Uh, this is how the technology used to be in the beginning. This is a Google Cardboard box, you know, uh, yeah. which allows you to get into early virtual reality and it's very, very <laughs> low tech. We teach our children how to make this and the use of yes. flat packs, some basic stuff, put your mobile phone in and uh, yeah there we go all right so that was early introduction into virtual virtual reality it does allow you to see things in 3d and uh, that's um, you know google cardboard box uh, uh, about six seven years ago then of course uh, over here in my i call this a table as my play lab you know so this is, uh, nice. oculus, this is oculus gear vr so samsung collaborated with oculus as a first company and they yes. were giving this headset which again requires a mobile phone to be plugged in and then you get into vr with some bluetooth device but then of course uh, oculus was was procured by facebook i think so that was something really um, interesting to happen that a company like facebook really believed that the next uh, uh, platform for social interaction is going to be away from mobile phones and screens and more three-dimensional more immersive and over the last three years now of course Oculus has created this Quest 2, which is just sitting behind me. So the hardware, something which used to cost like, you know, a few hundreds of thousands of dollars is now within affordability range of about, you know, this costs like $299 and the prices will go further down. Everybody is waiting for, uh, you know, other companies to fall in as well. Microsoft already has this HoloLens. It's extremely expensive. It's more like a B2B or a B2 government production product. Uh, but again, those prices will come down. Magic Leap is another company which has invested literally billions in the hardware itself. And everybody is waiting for Apple to come out. So Apple will definitely join this bandwagon, so to speak. And when Apple comes, uh, you know, when, into a product range, they execute some things clinically. Now, that doesn't mean that others haven't. But that means that 
the world actually adopts uh, very easily an Apple product because it's both crafted with detailed engineering and uh, detailed design philosophy that makes the products use easier to adapt at a commercially wide scale. So the hardware technology is going to change uh, dramatically and time is not far that you will have just, uh, uh, um, you know, smart glasses, just like you got smart watches, which will be able to overlay data. So you'll have singular augmented and virtual devices and eventually maybe just uh, contact lens that, uh, that, is, that is already enabled and um, a bit like uh, Ready Player One, you know, I don't, I do not know, or like Free Guy, you know, if you've seen these Hollywood movies, they are a big inspiration for us developers to create things. And software-wise, also we are we are ready for it. We are getting ready for it. One of the best things which happened, I think, so from adoption point of view of this metaverse, with Facebook changing its name to Meta, that really mm -hmm. meant a big recognition for people in the industry. But yes, this is serious business. Uh, the web development will go from two to three, so things will happen. So there, are, these are busy days. Let's say that you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. They're busy days. Sleep is something you know you do if you have time. So, um, tell me, um, you know, like obviously you are immersed and you're working towards what we call skills of the future, yeah. Um, and your education platform certainly delivers this. So, um, as we are still working out what the metaverse is. Can you elaborate, I guess, on what types of skills you're teaching children? Um, because when we think of metaverse skills, it's like, okay, what do you need to, you know, if there's a 10-year-old watching this today, which they might be, or a parent that's watching and thinking, oh, wow, my son's really immersed in this world. I want to get him involved. What sort of skills are you teaching them specifically? Okay, so, uh, you know, let's uh, talk about uh, what do teenagers or kids like to do today? And especially since the uh, last two years for many, many people around the world that uh, they couldn't attend the schools in a normal way. They were online and they couldn't, uh, you know, children like to interact. Children just like to love to go out and play, you know, football or, you know, tennis or whatever else and be on the grass, you know. They don't want to be stuck inside. And that's not what we intend to do with the, with the whole idea of metaverse. In fact, the idea is that it should allow expansion into exploring things that they just can't do in an easy, mm -hmm. in an easy way. The first thing is that that we want to use the technology not just for uh, games. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of games uh, these days are just created around killing machines. Now, that is a bad way to use technology. It can be entertaining, and I'm not going to name, but uh, we know that a lot of parents have, um, uh, you know, specific, uh, I would say, resistance to gaming because they believe the child is just wasting their time. <laughs> but the problem is that. Even us as parents these days, when you got a kid, one way is to, when, and if a kid is say unhappy, or let's say you've gone shopping or something else, you just leave your mobile phone with the child. Now that is the start of their digital journey. Many children yeah. will get Guilty. a <laughs> <laughs> We all yeah. are, you know, we all done it. Yeah. We all improve. So the kids, they, they, they zap around. Uh, they know a lot. Uh, they are much more digitally aware of what can be done uh, with technology mm. than us. So, for example, they will experiment and they don't mind taking things out. The first most important thing is that, that if we are going to use this technology, are we becoming a consumer of the technology or are we becoming a creator of the technology? And that's mm -hmm. what we try to do. We don't say that, okay, if you have to learn metaverse or you have to learn coding, no. Coding comes way, way, way ahead. You don't need to code many things these days in order to create something which is useful or tangible. So when we begin our journey, we follow the four principles of, of, as I say, our curriculum, our design. We focus on creativity and design. Now, that can only happen if you are not stressed. If you are stressed as a child or as a creator or as a, uh, you know, anybody who wants to do something new, you will, be, you, will be, you will not be focused. So first thing is that how do you become focused and mindful? How do you disconnect from your daily worries and go into that path that, Okay, now I'm going to create something. So our courses begin with mindfulness into inner self. First of all, how do I manage my problems and challenges? Now, how do I solve the problem with creativity? So that's the first pillar. The second thing is that in order to create anything, you have to work with your hands. Even today, most complex movies are storyboarded. You know, the most uh, beautiful uh, dialogues are always written on paper. 
So you have to use pen and paper somehow, you know, you just can't throw that out. That, that old technology yeah. of us drawing on the cave, you just can't throw that out. So to be able to explain your idea, you need to express it with words, with images, with pictures, with drawings. And we tell uh, uh, our students how to learn from the nature and communicate using traditional tools. That could be modeling with clay, that could be anything that could be sculpting, but a picture tells a thousand words. So it's, it's important to bring the analog classical medium to improve your communication. That's the key. The third thing is we use a software. So we are not yet into virtual reality. We are still now getting into the digital world that we use a software which is ready to get into the metaverse or into VR. So that's that means working with some free stuff like Autodesk produces from some free stuff which Adobe produces and some other commercially uh, available uh, software. And then you get into VR, you use Unity or Unreal and so on and so forth. So mastering the software is essential to pr produce a product. The last thing is that, that you use virtual reality to experience. And when we use VR, it's not just, okay, that, okay, I've created a game in VR, no. But it's about, okay, uh, when we are creating something in VR, what is good and bad? How do I protect my children in the virtual world? Today, the regulation and the legal framework around so security in VR is very, very loose or actually non-existent. So we tell children that, okay, just like in real life, you don't meet strangers, try not to communicate with people you think are not right. Similarly, we tell them that what is a rude or, or, or unacceptable behavior in the VR, in the metaverse. So if they find something, then they can go and report back to their parents or, or be careful about it. And, mm -hmm. um, and eventually they, they tidy it up there with their uh, stuff with the NFTs and whatnot, which is what they do. So these are our paths to creativity. Brilliant, brilliant. And just um, just to kind of, I guess, round off, and we do have some questions from the audience, but we will get to them at the end, everyone. But please do send them through to the chat because they're brilliant. Um, quickly, what are two to three metaverse trends or popular features you see children gravitating towards? So in your experience, what are like they, they're joining? They're like, I want to build this or I want to do this or what are they kind of, what's, what's I guess, the hot ticket for, for, for your audience at the moment? Okay, so three things I would say. They all want to make NFTs. This is number one. Yeah. Now, whether NFTs is like real or is this going to be bananas or something like that, I don't know about it. it it's just it's just a crazy frenzy. And many people do not know the cost of making the NFTs, the environmental cost of, of, of you know, the gas fee involved in minting the NFTs. This is a big, big, big problem. A lot of hype and then lack of regulation or knowledge. But everybody wants to mint an NFT, number one. Number two, everybody doesn't just want to play a game, which is a game. They want to get social on the game and they want to get immersed in the game. So the games that we're talking about, they are, they are, they are, they are social platforms and definitely they will be the transaction or money platforms in the future. Something new, which a lot of parents are interested in, even children are keen on, is uh, how do we not need to be on the normal currency for this in the metaverse? How can we use work on blockchain? And that very, very few people know or they are able to solve the problem. But definitely the three big things are NFTs, okay, social interactions, and uh, I would say uh, being able to interact, not just uh, with audio or video, but also physically. Haptics perhaps, for example, is next big thing which is gonna come in. And last, but not the least, how can I use this uh, the world of uh, crypto to, to decentralize the way the education, all things are. These are three big trends that we are seeing happening. And the children from nine all the way till you know adults till 82 who want to get into it. Brilliant. I love that. Wow. Well, that's that's excellent. Thank you, Sanal, for sharing that with us. It's brilliant. And we will please do stick around because we have some more questions for you at the end. But we do want to skip along quickly to Ilya. Thank you, Ilya. I'm glad your camera's up working. So that's brilliant. Um, so for you, I have some questions as well. Um, one second, I just need to bring up my questions <laughs> uh one second da, 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 da. okay excuse me i had them on my computer and then they disappeared on me okay so Ilya, it's so great to have you here firstly i know there's a lot going on in the world right now and um you're ukrainian so i'm sure your mind has been in many places and sanal just made a very poignant point about uh, the people that he brings on into his 
um, learning world about, you know, stress and creativity. So I hope that you're all right and we'll get through this with you. So, so as a designer and a creative director of the metaverse, um, which brings endless possibilities. So, you know, I can imagine for anyone that has a creative streak or aspiration, the metaverse is like, whoa, it's like everywhere. And there's so many directions you can go in. Um, how did you get into the wonderful world of metaverse? Because you are traditionally a creative director. I'm imagining you worked in kind of the traditional media, so to speak. So I guess when did the transition happen for you that you're like, you know what, I'm going to focus 100% on the metaverse gotcha uh thank you so much uh january uh thank you so much for inviting me uh thank you sanal such a great uh, speech as well uh, um i appreciate you guys to be here uh, and uh, speak together with you um so uh yeah been working as a designer for the past 20 years uh, i've been focusing on um working for enter enterprise uh working for startups uh, running my own design studio uh, working in tech myself uh, around 15 years as well. Uh, I, I've been gaining this experience uh, that um, combined together combination of VR, AR, UI, UX, uh, product design, branding, marketing, uh, development, and using all those uh, skills together kind of like created my uh, current uh, passion uh, that are focusing on the metaverse because i feel it's not just like the industry that you pick is kind of like the direct direction and the trend and i'm also been uh, in the blockchain space since the beginning so for me uh, <clears throat> pretty much using the design art 3d uh, meta spaces uh, and applying cryptocurrencies and blockchain to it it was like the perfect next step of evolution for the technology where i feel myself pretty much comfortable uh being an innovator so that's that's how i got in you know i was <laughs> i was building ar vr experiences and um as we all know the uh sonal probably know as well being in the vr ER space there was a bunch of use cases that been covered uh, from AR VR perspective, but the utilization of AR VR was never at the point where it was getting the high performance and kind of like the market, it was not covering all the marketing needs kind of. So people was still not using it as much as they could uh, because we work on, on the VR technology science eighties and pretty much utilization are still not there. So I feel like the uh, implementation and using the new innovative technologies like blockchain and applying the currencies and technologies creates a totally new uh, possibilities uh, in the meta space. So that's how we can like join into the gaming. Brilliant. So you're definitely an early adopter and I think uh, an evangelist of types for the metaverse. So tell me how important is the role of community? Because we know that NFTs obviously have blown up and they're so community driven. Um, I'd love to know, like, how have you found the role of community when building your Web3 or rather Metaverse marketplace? And how has Ulta, I guess, gone about developing that community? So if you can talk about like Discord or different platforms of you to harness your community and how important that is to building a platform like you are. Right, definitely. Community is the key in all the projects, and that's what everyone should be focusing on. Uh, Alter is a pretty new uh, startup, I will say, uh, itself. Uh, we started, we launched uh, end of the last year, and we're still in the process of like uh, putting together an MVP. Uh, but of course, on the technology side of it, I've been working on the on this technology and on the engine itself for the past five, six years. And I'm not even starting with the design and ideas about the metaverse that I have back in the days. So I was kind of like always planning to do it. And I had this idea that I'm seeing this meta space where I can sell and buy things, where I can send currency, send information to each other into the AR space. I didn't even know that we're going to call it metaverse um, back then. Um, but uh, um, uh, can you please repeat the question? What, what, what was oh, the... Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So just um, how have you used, I guess, different channels or existing channels? Oh, like yeah, for the community, for the community, right. Yeah, yeah. And the, uh, sorry, I'm just jumping into the uh, <laughs> different things because when I can like mention that. <laughs> but uh, commu community is very important, of course. Uh, I feel like all the projects and all the success that we've seen currently um, are based on the communities because uh, <clears throat> that's what 
I feel like the blockchain era opened with uh, uh, ideas of crowdfunding and ideas, I mean, ide ideas of crowdfunding in general uh, mm -hmm. with ICOs back in the days and different ways, new ways how people can invest, support and be part of any project. Um, that's currently what's happening in DAO space where people mm -hmm. can not just be an, a simple, just one person can be just an investor, can support the project, can be a community member, can spread news information and build awareness about this project. So the beauty of it that pretty much uh, it's like the new uh, society movement where like everyone is integrated as much as possible in the company that building and the company is showing all the transparency and participation uh, on every step of the development that's why this space is that's like very new uh, innovative way of actually building anything and uh, community is the most important building things um, currently with alter we are our main focus, of course, is to build technology to show to our community and uh, our uh, main community of Alter users is an artist, developers, people who are uh, like to play around this NFT space, uh, play around with NFTs from, from the 3D perspective because um, mm -hmm. Alter itself is a AR 3D metaverse. We, mm -hmm. we have VR experiences as well, but we mainly focusing on mixed reality. And uh, we pretty much building the product for uh, designers like us, uh, for regular users, of course, but the, the main utilization is it can be for the person who uh, enjoying NFTs and who would like to see his NFTs in the 3D AR space and find some um, different uh, ideas of, uh, for its uh, utilization. So pretty much the community around is the same designers, artists, musicians, uh, people, uh, people who are passionate about the same things. Brilliant. So yeah, definitely what you said, people are invested in it. So it's a community that they want to share their, their, their success or their journey. So it's, it's a definitely a brilliant recipe, the business model for building community. Um, my question is, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are working digital goods and physical goods. And if that's so, can you maybe elaborate a bit about how that works for those that are joining us? Or like, how does it even work with physical goods? Because, yeah, I'd like to know. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. So the main the main beauty that uh, Metaverse opens is uh, having the real life experience right so you can have a shopping experience you can have i don't know get married in metaverse or find something mm -hmm. new find extra extra things that you are can't um get let's say in physical life so the beauty that we find in that's um mixing of physical world and digital world together because mm -hmm. you can have uh, different different additional mixed experience in that reality that applies to your uh, physical space. So the good example, let's say you are want to buy new shoes and you looking for the new designer drop that you are looking for in the market. I don't know. Let's say we get like I don't know, uh, Balenciaga, right? They they launch a new drop and you're a big fan of that brand. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and you and 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 you are looking for the drop on the map because you know that there is can be some sale happen. The sale in our technology can happen through NFT because Balenciaga can make can make unique NFT that's going to be linked to the to these expensive shoes or anything that they build. Uh, and the beauty that I can go into the shopping center or anywhere um, where I located in a city, let's say on a Times Square in New York, where there's a lot of people, I can get the notification through the My Alter app and I can see that Balenciaga made the drop for me right there. So I can go and pick up that NFT that's going to be cryptocurrency, that's going to have some value as a token, as the coin, pretty much. So it's a, it's a digital currency first. And also it has AR 3D look to it. So I can try and wear, let's say, those shoes in AR before even I'm buying it. I can try and see how it looks on my feet. And then when I click and buy it, it goes to my wallet. And technically I'm receiving the physical good that I can, that can be delivered to my, um, to my home, or I can go into the Balenciaga shop and show my NFT and pick it up. So that's one of the examples wow. how physical, physical world linking together with uh, digital world. Wow. And I Brilliant. Think, uh, I think just to add to that comment of Ilya, the world is waiting that, uh, you know, that, that actually, um, you know, one of the reason things, why would you really like to do this? And I said, the key thing is connectivity. If we as humans ever going to be, uh, you know, as I said, um, 
not just a interplanetary, but let's say an intergalactic species. We come from this land of Mother Earth. We need this technology to reconnect with Earth as well. So whether we are talking about these transactions which are enabling communication or enabling creativity or enabling sales, we have to see this as beyond just, uh, you know, uh, you know, internet is not just, or computers are not just, and you know, as I said, flat two-dimensional. You have to see this as a connected three-dimensional space, which allows us to immerse. And this, uh, the technologies of, as I said, enabling the artists, especially, or creators of owning copyright, taking the middleman out of the equation uh, has been the key to transformative. And over the last two years, this pandemic has also been a greater opportunity for young minds uh, who have been able to evolve and use this tech to, to create something really beautiful. So that's the key. Right, right. I, I will also add to that, that's actually the value of Metaverse that we can bring. One of the philosophical ideas and fundamental things for the Ultra Metaverse that I was putting together is an idea of Metaverse will save the Earth. So idea was that we pretty much in the Metaverse space building the, building the metrics, right? So we build in uh, this scary future where people are locked in the in the helmets and walking in some digital space and they get in fat and they connected to these devices that's the future that everyone hates right so we don't want to build that so i'm thinking about i don't want to build another metrics i don't want the machines to control everything so idea behind the ultra metaverse and metaverse i feel like the future of metaverse in general that uh technically with the spaces that we create we can help the environment and we can help different uh causes that are happening in the world so uh first of all that's why i picked the mixed reality first and uh, either the vr space because i want people to go outside I, I want people to go hike to join to walk around to pick up things having kind of like a pokemon go experience where they entertain with different things in the real world so they still breathe in, breathe in their fresh air and they still want to be active you want people to go outside of course for the COVID things things and like for this new trend that hopefully not going to be scaling too much because I hate this future that everyone is predicting. We know that that's where we're going. Um, uh, I also added the key feature is a uh, charity piece. So we have a bunch of problems in the world that uh, come from environment problems that come from the hunger, poor, uh, poorness, like uh, different things, Cle uh, cleaning the water, cl uh, removing the plastic, sustainable energy um, uh, go green and all like different things that we cover um, so the my idea was <clears throat> and that pretty much what we started to build uh, perfectly applying with nft because every smart contract can have a little donation that's going to be automatically going to some specific charity organization or a fund that support this uh, type of course and uh, the ultra metaverse uh, thing we are, we we are making the nfts let's say if you are buying 3d dolphin in my metaverse space in the, in the nft itself you can um save the dolphin in real life if you plant in the tree uh, in the metaverse you plant in the tree in real life if you're doing something good you pretty much support in the circulation of economy for uh eco regeneration cleaning the water and things like that so that was the main kind of fundamental key feature for me because i feel like the crypto itself of course we have in the top 10 coins on the market who's uh, you know um who's leading the market in general but if you know to run the bitcoin network itself the amount of electricity that you need is equal the uh amount of uh, electri electricity for mexico whole country so pretty much just to run the bitcoin network can you imagine how um <clears throat> what's the what the what's the need for running all the servers all the highly uh, uh high high highly uh uh high level cpu processor graphic uh, graphic uh video processors as well as network itself to run uh, to run metaverse there's going to be also uh, using blockchain and everything we need to think about how we can make it sustainable how we can save our planet using that technology that's kind of it's like when you buy your carbon offset so to speak so if you can do bad but also do good at the same time you know um, through right. it's like, it's, it's, and, and, and there are many actions and there are many actions like that which uh, the children uh, especially the youth need to be aware of for example it could be simple things how how let's take for example taking a train or a metro or a bus ride is more environmentally sustainable and how you can reward 
people for recycling, perhaps, for example, uh, all combined in. So, and you see, this uh, phone has been a transition device. We were not born with this in, in early, as I said, 70s or 80s. I still remember, you know, when I was young, making an ISD call or international call was a pretty big deal. But now everybody has it in their pocket. So this te these technologies are transitional technologies. The key thing is that that message that we explain these technologies to our youth so that they don't just use, consume it and use it for the good of betterment. And same thing is with our courses as well. For example, every paying child actually sustains education of two underprivileged chil children in India who have got no access to meaningful education. When they connect in the metaverse, they are getting educated by some of the best teachers in Europe. And also we are employing, uh, the, we are giving employment to teachers who really wouldn't have access to these children as well. It's about creating that hope, that ray of hope, which is the key. And this is what this technology really allows us to be bonded together as a human race to solve some of our problems. So Ilya, great, great ideas. Well done. I'm, I'm glad that you talked about environmental consciousness and saving the planet. It's so, so, so important. Thank you so it much. Is. Yeah, there, there is no future without it because to pretty much exist in the future, uh, uh, we need to save our planet. We need to live. Yeah. And um, yeah. A hundred percent. I think, uh, you know, we've got to be saying you can't let, you can't just consume it. As you say, Sonal, you've got to actually be a creator. And if you can do that, do it in a meaningful way. So, um, I guess my next question for you, Ilya, is, um, you know, it's a, obviously a problematic time at the moment. There's, you know, war in Ukraine. And um, I noticed that Alta has given a voice, so to speak, to people in Russia that may not feel enabled to voice their opinions about what's going on because of censorship and whatnot. Um, I just wanted to ask you, you kind of created like a, safe and encrypted environment where they can meet virtually if i'm correct can you tell us a little bit about these efforts and yeah this is another great example of you providing you know something great yes. for your platform yeah so uh <clears throat> starting with uh, pretty much my another philosophy i'm digital nomad i travel around the globe i've been in different parts of the world world living in different countries um i'm a very peaceful person myself I hate, uh, you know, any direction to, you know, aggression if it's coming for um, any un unfair circumstances. So, of course, if you need to save yourself and protect yourself, you can, you know, uh, use your power and strength. But technically, I'm a very peaceful person in general. I'm considering myself a global citizen, even though it's maybe not existing term in, like, officially you can be like that. But I'm, um, I'm United States-based. Um, uh, person who was born in Ukraine and I'm considering myself Ukrainian. Uh, <clears throat> the situation in Ukraine is very bad, uh, of course. Um, and it's, you know, a bunch of disinformation in the news. It's a, it's a bunch of, you know, uh, when the war is happening, it's a bunch of politicians who's making uh, different moves and politicians around the globe who's making different moves to make things happening the way they're happening right now. But the biggest uh, problem that are innocent people, kids are dying, um, you know, women getting raped, uh, people are losing their houses and losing their homes. It's all so 100% true, I'm from there. And the moment when it's happened, I had all my family, my mom, my father, everyone in Ukraine. And more than that, I had like more than 60 people of my co-workers being in Ukraine as well, because I'm pretty much outsourcing my people from Ukraine to, to, the, to, the, global, to, to the global market. And Alter yes. is the company that actually core uh, Metaverse developers, Unity developers who's building our Metaverse are located in Kharkiv. And Kharkiv was one of the first cities who was getting destroyed uh, with yes. the start of the war. So for me, yeah. the March was probably one of the most stressful uh, months uh, in my life in general. Uh, first yeah. of all, because <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> when I was thinking that my mom is there, um, I was speaking to special forces uh, from the United States, different people. I was ready to put 
all the money I have just to take her out because she was in the northeast part of the Ukraine where the city was totally occupied by the military and it was gotten a lockdown. The, like the civilians uh, started to get killed, the buildings destroyed, something unbelievable just started to happen. And I was trying, like all I can think about it right now, of course I was focusing on these all fun things and make metaverse that care but then when the really situation happened in my life, when I understand that, okay, wherever I was building, I can't even focus on work. I just need to save my family. I need to save my people. I need to stabilize my business and work so my people can continue working and we can you know, continue doing our things. So for me, it was uh, pretty tough, but I guess it's my life purpose. If I decided to do that, life gives me opportunity to actually make it happen. It's like how God works. I don't know how the universe works. So if you say that you want to do it, life definitely will give you a chance to make it happen. So, and I was like, okay, like my actually metaverse will save the earth. My idea that I was planning to do, I can actually perfectly apply right now. And <clears throat> because I was saying in the team, so we created the evacuation charts. We evacuated people from uh, locations um, that are, the most uh, dangerous, like Kharkiv, Sumy, um, uh, Mariupol, uh, Kherson, all those, uh, all those things. So I started the global community movement uh, called With Ukraine. So anybody can be with Ukraine. Any company, any country, any person can stay with Ukraine. Stay not for the war, not for the mili- not for the military reason, but for the reason for of peace, saving the innocent uh, people uh, who losing their homes and women and kids first who we are being evacuated from the country we evacuated more than 600 people for the past months uh sent more than 400k in the nations through cryptocurrency and everything uh, and, and 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 other uh, regular fiat currencies um i build the metaverse with my partners body space um so it's pretty much web gl technologies that we use it for the metaverse spaces as a conference so our idea was that uh politicians a politician situation in russia are actually very um pretty bad so uh, they don't have access to global news and the global information at all all the information that they get in are coming from the propaganda machine uh from like russian government that pretty much soviet union technology that still not changed after like whole century pretty much so they're still using the same technologies to brainwash the people internally in the country and all the news that they get in it's actually news that they watch on the tv they they don't watch anything else they don't have another option yeah. so um and they have really big problem of speaking anything they want I'm, I'm proud to be a global citizen and i'm proud that i can go anywhere and speak about myself and tell what i like what is my foundation is mm-hmm. people in russia can't say that they against the war because if they say that they against the war they get into mm-hmm. jail for like 15 years mm-hmm. can you imagine that it's just yeah. unfair. So we, I was like, I was just trying to do everything I can. We have technology. So I build a metaverse space where people can get together. We are publishing. Um, we have like a TV screen there so people can go enjoy. We have a technology where people can speak pretty much like we have in a conference right now. We can have like hundreds of people together in the same room that can speak. We don't implement avatars. Pretty much idea was with that people can be in the same room and just talk about what they think. And it was kind of like the first, the first step how we used our metaverse technology, and you know our, our last, our last uh, tag that we've been building together with Alter Team, and my partners and is that we. Right, am I correct? Is it encrypted somewhat so that you know? So. so- so uh, currently is not uh, we, we uh, skip the blockchain piece just to make it more useful for anybody. So, but the next right. step what we're planning for the for the for the stage two is to use the um, Web three. So you can log with your look log in with your wallet, and you're gonna have like uh, um, unidentified identity. But uh, currently there is no like you can put any username, and um, nobody gonna identify you. But of course, if it's the 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 from the cryptography perspective it's not as as safe of course as as it could be and we put it to the next step but just for for the usage usage of metaverse that people can get together in general right and right and just speak about it that's brilliant like that's that just shows like also how fast you can execute on something that you know this is a relatively new i mean it's been going on for a month now it feels like forever it's been the longest month but that you can do this and that you can, like you said, be a global citizen and do your part utilising this technology is brilliant. So that must give you some some sense of, you know, 
contributing in some way and I can only imagine how difficult it must be for you and look our hearts go out to everyone in Ukraine and the atrocities that are happening so thank you Elia for um for doing this it's really important thank and you so much that's, that's what the that's what you know communication is all about it's about voices and letting them be heard yeah so um not suppression so um I guess to just get back to metaverse um but I would love a whole other <laughs> session on what you've been through, really. And I, you'll probably be able to write a memoir one day about it. Um, and it'll only lead to, you know, I always say the, the things you go through lead you to get to the next place and um, it'll pan out hopefully the way we want. So yeah. I guess my final question for you, and there are marketers that are listening today and developers and, uh, people that are just imagining how do they get even into this world of the metaverse. But what advice would you give marketers and designers that are looking to embark upon building a metaverse? Because you've done it. <laughs> You're still doing it. Um, like anything, it's evolving. There's different challenges that pop up every day. But I guess, can you, um, like, maybe, yeah, because I've got two questions, actually. I lied. There are two. <laughs> so my first one is, yeah, what advice would you give someone um, specifically marketers and designers, because that's kind of your background in design. Um, if they're thinking, okay, how do I even start a metaverse or create a platform? Or, yeah, I know it's a broad question, but any kind of top tips right. you could give someone <laughs> who might be looking to get into Yes, the yes. So, 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 so for the designers uh, itself, and especially if you're in design space, uh you probably know it already uh but the main thing is think 3d less than 2d because it's such a huge uh, currently such a huge step in 3d space in general and i'm not talking just about the high poly high poly is going to be the um uh, like unreal engine and like other high poly technologies that you can use but even the low poly like um cubism uh, and like different things that you can simply build like on the uh, simple 3d graphics that you can start using and coming from the branding perspective also any identity any style that you put in together you have to think about 3d space right now if you're thinking about the ui ux user experience user interface you're thinking about the ui ux that can be in ar that can be in vr also that's how you switch slowly into the into the into the metaverse space because we are coming into the next step when uh goggles are going to be more uh trendy than you know even the vr headset because you're going to be having mixed reality experience and your mixed reality experience creates totally new uh ways how you interact with digital products how you can touch something and how you can click on something how you can say something and receive any product or, or good thinking in that direction is going to help you to open that uh, bigger doors how you're going to create uh, any experience and everything is experience experience is a trend general for everything for sale for presentation mm -hmm. people will like to be uh, entertained you know, they like to participate and they like to do something it doesn't matter if they just buy buying the new balenciaga bag or or shoes or something or they you know watching some cartoon or playing playing the game they want to have that experience be part of the brand so for the from for the brand perspective is the same uh, metaverse direction that how you can actually change the change your brand into the step of innovation, how you can apply your branding rules, your brand identity into the metaverse space and what kind of experience you can create for your for your customers and users in your uh, metaverse space that you're building. Bunch of, you know, bunch of technologies already exist like Decentral Lands and Vox who created their own pretty much land and uh, they have their own pretty much um, constructors to build that spaces. But uh, it's more than just that. So that's the best way for start to create a brand is just pick the land, build something, entertain, and you can play around and see how the easy metaverse, metaverse work. For me, the metaverse is a little bit bigger than that because as I say, it's mixed reality. Is I like to have location-based experiences. It's, a, it's also an NFT, it's gaming. You can apply, you know, um, you can apply anything, AI to it or something like that. 
thinking about the avatars, how we, how how the brand can make something for that avatar, and how avatar gonna be coexist with the real person, with the real character in the future, because it's gonna be the future of fashion. It's gonna be the future of anything. You you don't need to wear clothing pretty much anymore. You can wear something <laughs> comfortable, and then in the goggles, you're gonna see all these new Balenciaga or Louis Vuitton collection on the person, and they just gonna be buying AR or mm -hmm. something uh, or mixed reality things that going to be exist in the physical world and in the digital world in the same moment and they're going to be also have value in, as a cryptocurrencies and that's great all this future of how technology is evolved right well i expect you to work with balenciaga <laughs> so, it's so, it's <laughs> yeah, i like vitamins also i don't know um, why but we'll I check with them. <laughs> we need to contact them after this, we'll send them this a recording little, a little product um, placement yeah, exactly. Um, so, and so you heard it here, first guys. You know, if you are a designer, a marketer, think out there, think three D, think experience. These are key things. Um, you to make it entertainment. So, um, 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 I've just got a. Oops, this seems like the screen is having problems. Okay, we'll continue on. Hopefully, you can all hear. Um, if you can't hear me, let me know. Um, speaking about entertainment, just quickly, I know you guys. Um, recently have done a partnership, so to speak, with Archstone Entertainment and Token Society to co-create a TV series um, called uh, Gay Aliens in Metaverse. So would you mind just rounding it up with like, what is this? How did this opportunity come about? You're actually, if I'm correct, you're kind of based in LA, even though you're a digital nomad or you truly a digital nomad and you're everywhere. <laughs> no, I, I'm truly a digital nomad, but I've been based in LA for the past. I mean, I've been based in California for the past few years. So my company registered and I have an apartment in, in California, uh, but currently in Milan, in Milan, Italy, as I told you before. So, and I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing right now a bunch of uh, work uh, for Ukraine. And that's why for me it's easy to be in Europe because evacuating people, we find in places in Europe. Uh, for the Arch, uh, Archstone uh, partnership, yes. Yeah. So uh, we have another partner, Token Society Company. They are a blockchain company and they have this uh, gay aliens project where they create, it's kind of like the fashion industry and they're making this uh, kind of like the futuristic aliens that are, you know, combine this mixed fashion um, attributes and things like that. Um, they also have some different drops, but we pretty much partner with them on the 3D AR perspective. So we built all the metaverse experience for them. And uh, they manage this partnership with the Hollywood company, Archstone, that are actually building um, a TV series. So an idea was to have a TV series, not just as a regular, or like a Netflix kind of series that we usually got used to, but it's also a metaverse game gamified experience where people can interact, where people can see those episodes in the meta space in AR, XR, uh, VR, um, and uh, be a part of that show. That's kind of like you know the pretty much the everyone everything that's happening in the metaverse is going to that direction. So it's pretty much the same basic foundation and the beauty that you can watch and be a part of any cartoon or the show or any experience but you're not just a spectator you can do something you can i don't know um uh, try something wear something i don't know talk to somebody and change the script and or like you know having wow. this like real re real life experience that creates create this new That's new way of looking to that be launched do you know or, or when so we we're working on we're working on uh, finalizing. Uh, we're working on the 3D models currently for that characters. So we're building the 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 the, the characters itself. Uh, so yes. I guess the stage it will be closer to the end of the year. Right. Well, we will stay tuned, so to speak. That sounds very exciting. So um, just to kind of, I know we've gone over time, so I apologize. There's just so much to cover and it's so extremely interesting. Um, some quick questions from the audience we've got in. Um, um, I'm just picking them as we go. Uh, I think this was targeted towards you, Sonal. Um, what metaverse is more advanced for you at the moment or which one is your favorite? And this has come from yeah, Quinn Pedrino. Okay, so um, like, uh, you know, some of these uh, metaverses were talked about uh, by, uh, you know, Ilya, Decentraland or, or for example, Mana or Sandbox. These are web two-dimensional um, interfaces. I believe they have got a very vital role to play 
because they allow the common public on you know anybody with just a mobile phone or 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 a, or a computer or a desktop to just uh, come and um, play and 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 do something in the virtual land. However, I believe that they will also evolve. They are not going to stay flat the way they are. They're going to become more immersive. They're going to become more interactive. So if we go into say the completely uh, virtual space, my favorite one right now, uh, I would say, is an Oculus uh, platform uh, called Horizons uh, VR or uh, Alt Space, perhaps for example. These are slightly more uh, advanced that allow three-dimensional interaction, again, as Ilya said, that they are uh, social uh, platforms and they should allow creativity. When creativity comes, when you give tools to the people in the metaverse to terraform or to create, they value it more. So Minecraft, for example, is so popular amongst teenagers and children because it's not just gaming, it's not just creating. Uh, and even Fortnite has recently added another you know, creative mode to it because they realize that it's not just enough to have meaning, meaningless killing of each other, you know. Not so just when you have creativity, exactly. So all these tools, uh, uh, you know, are platforms which allow creativity to combine with social interaction, and then they have value added through some transactions inside. Uh, you know, uh, play to earn is something really very new, and a lot of our children are signing up to this platform called Play to Earn. We are also working our own concepts as well how to create a metaverse of art and design you know there is nothing like this which exists it's all all very very new and there'll be more people coming i believe we should not be wary of competition we should be very very keen of collaboration and um, you know just like in the olden days we had people painting in in in, in the 15th century to explain their ideas then came the films the films are still called pictures as we still in the UK, we call them, oh, I'm going to see a picture. It's nothing, but they're moving pictures, isn't it? They tell a story. And a picture in which you are the hero or the princess, as, as Ilya was saying, that, that in, in, the, in this comedy, uh, in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, the TV series, you can decide what to do. Then that becomes a game. So the world between entertainment, between game and uh, film and creativity collapses into one and becomes interactive, becomes social. And becomes democratized. That's 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 what I like, and some of these platforms are allowing that. They're all great, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I think. Look, I definitely some will rise to the top, actual. Um, but I think at the moment everyone's kind of like taking a little bit from one to the other, and we're all kind of learning together what it's going to be. Um, we've had a question from Ignatius Ernest. Um, I won't try and pronounce your last name, but I'll, I will. Sam Ralph. There we go, gave it a go. Um, who is asking, I guess this is more kind of a, it's coming from, I guess, the skeptics, because let's face it, with any new technology, there's always skeptics. Um, when central banks are against crypto, he says, how do you see the success of the metaverse in real life application? So I guess he's saying, well, if the banks are saying no to crypto, how is the metaverse going to? I can quickly answer that because you know it's a it's a very um, uh, cryptocurrency is the opposition of the um, central bank system, right? That's kind of like the first thing that we all know. So uh, yeah. that's why the bank and the governments usually put in together some blockers for the crypto to grow mm -hmm. because they not as like the the government wants USD to be the main currency, let's say, right? The American government. Um, yeah. And they don't have any oppositional uh, currency uh, to to exist as 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 the anything that can be uh, uh, can be uh, more I don't know transparent or something like that. Even though the big corporation we all know was switching to the blockchain itself almost immediately after they figure out that bl what blockchain can do for the banking in general, for uh, uh, fintech, financial services, and things like that. And blockchain integration are so huge currently in any bank. I've talked to Chase, Bank of America, doesn't matter. So many Morgan Stanley, they're already using blockchain as a part of the of the tech. Bunch of crypto already baked by but by, by banks too. So we're talking about Ripple and like there is a bunch of coins that created by the central bank organization because they want to have the influence in the crypto space. So for me, the question that crypto you know, are not successful in a banking space are just so misunderstanding of the current situation 
uh, in the yes. world because yes. there is a way how the crypto used pretty much as Bitcoin, Ethereum and like like as the opposition. But yes. we already seen that crypto actually got got success in the, in, in the space for several years already. And yes. uh, of course, it's volatile. It has its own uh, things, but that technology that going to be evolving into something way bigger and things like that. So I don't I see that there is any, any blockers can be for that. I think also that the resistance to crypto uh, currently comes from many skeptics because of its energy consumption as well. So we do know that there is a big carbon footprint of it. Now, I strongly believe that the way to offset the carbon footprint is not that, OK, I'm using crypto, I'm, I'm taking money. I'll put the money or the profits I make into a carbon positive initiative. No, that's wrong. That's like saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to burn X, uh, what you call fee of gas. I know gas, burning gas is going to cause pollution. So I will charge people back from carbon and then invest in positive projects. Now those technologies are, 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 are okay to socialize it, but that's not the solution. You know, um, uh, road user pricing, for example, coming from a mobility background is not the solution. You know, if you, if you can, if we can problem, if you can regulate the problem in such a way by giving people alternate not to travel itself, that's a key. So if somebody or we can create a cryptocurrency, which is not going to be energy in, 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 you know, intensive, which is going to be helping on a social cause, which is going to enable communities to happen. And that's what we intend to do with the academy as well. Our, our objective is to create token and then eventually have a currency, which is going to be solving some of these key problems to be socially carbon positive, to be, to be contributing positively to saving this planet. That's the key. Then the governments right. are keen to dialogue. They are no government in the world, uh, unless you're running a dictatorship, wants to go against its own people. So you, you, there's a dialogue in democracy to be happened. There's a dialogue. And these are stepping stones. The current story of uh, uh, both of, um, I would say, any of these coins you take around or currencies, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum, they are stepping stones in technology. They will not be the end. Either they will improvise or they will be faded out by something better. The, the quest uh, in human, as I said, survival is always on not just surviving, but thriving. And these technologies will evolve. So we are looking for technologies and people want to collaborate on creating a, a, a green coin, uh, which is going to save our, our planet. You know, we should all collaborate and come together and we are happy to, to collaborate on that. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I I totally agree with that. I ju just want to mention one project that my friend in Chicago does that related to green coins. Um, forgot the name, but uh, they pretty much what they do, they do mining from uh, the gas tubes. So the gas mm -hmm. that put the pollution in the air, they put together a filter that actually take this gas and uh, generate the electricity for mining. So that's the idea of like how you can actually utilize utilize the bad things that should damage the, the planet, but you re, re, you convert them into the electricity and you mine based on that. So examples like that can create the green coins that can be as a next step. And they, they already like huge in a huge evolution right now. What are their name again? So I missed the name. Of the... Um, I don't, but I'll, I can send you the name. Uh, I, I can check you can my, my post friends. Post it on your LinkedIn, uh, uh, Ilya. That will be very useful. That's brilliant. Yes. That's brilliant. I just sent you a request in LinkedIn. Thank you guys so much for your time today. Um, and for everyone that stayed with us um, and listened, and hopefully you took away some valuable learnings about the metaverse and how to build on it and how to grow it. And um, look, we're all in this together. And um, I think it, the, the, the future is bright. So um, keep, keep, keep imagining, keep creating, and keep doing good. So um, thank you again. Son, Sonal and Ilya, it was such a pleasure. And um, hopefully we'll see you guys again. If you want, you can reach out to these guys on LinkedIn. I'm sure they're on there. <laughs> and um, and I thank you all for your time. Sure. Thank, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, you guys. <laughs> Cheers. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.